Uh, let's go way back to medical school. We learn about oxygen, we learn about basic biochemistry and mitochondrial respiration uh, sometime around our first or second year, and then we forget it. The bottom line is oxygenation. Your cell can't do anything if it can't make ATP. Just because there's oxygen out here where my hands are, it's a long, long way from this oxygen out here to oxygen here, in the, in the capillary beds down here, or in my kidneys, or in my intestine. This oxygen has to go through several different membranes. It's got to go through the alveolar membrane. It's got to transfuse by pressure. All of this is done by pressure gradient. It's got to transfuse or diffuse um, to blood serum, blood plasma, and then enter the red blood cell, go through its membrane, be picked up, and then be carried by the heart. So the heart's got to pump that to the tissues. Then it's got to leave the red cell membrane again, get out of the red cell membrane. All this is under pressure, remember, because that's how all gases move, is by pressure and liquids. And then it's got to get out of the red cell membrane. It's got to diffuse through the plasma. It's got to diffuse across the capillary membrane. Then it's got to diffuse into the interstitial fluid. This is all under pressure. And then get inside the cell. And that's a long journey. Any defect anywhere along the way is going to impair the final uh, home of oxygen, which is the mitochondria. And so, energy production will be diminished with any single defect they're in. And every place you can improve the, the diffusion of oxygen or the movement of oxygen in any capacity, you're going to improve healing. The latest research shows that the best indicator of longevity is how much oxygen you consume. If you consume oxygen, you're making energy. You should live longer, healthier, and repair better. Manfred von Harden found that when you do exercise with oxygen, you had a greater AVO2 difference. What does that mean? Well, the O2, this is the partial pressure of oxygen in the arterial system versus the partial pressure of oxygen in the venous system. The greater the difference, the more oxygen got dumped into the tissues and consumed. Because if it wasn't consumed, it would come back on the venous side and you wouldn't see it. So that's an indicator of oxygen combustion. This improves that. So this is, a, this is another interesting thing to think about from my perspective. I'm an, I'm an oxidation guy. I do ozone, I do ultraviolet, I do anything I can to improve oxygen delivery and combustion. This, does, this is non-invasive. And if you can get a greater AVO2 difference with a non-invasive device, this is something that patients can do in their home. Anybody can do it in their office. And in a sense, it's not really an oxidation treatment, but you're getting one of the effects of oxidation, the increased difference in the, uh, the spread in the uh, arteriovenous uh, partial pressure of oxygen. Oh, yeah. So people ask us, what diseases, you know, can this help? Okay. Well, to, to me, that's an oxymoron. The issue is, what diseases can it not help? Because oxygen's going to help everything. There isn't anything I can think of that getting better oxygenation into your body isn't going to help. That's what people should be asking.